I've opened up AutoCAD Cell 3D 2015. This is the basic install of the, the package. There's no customization that's going on. Uh, here's just the default screen when you double click on the icon to open up the program. The default start screen has three columns of data. On the left side it lets us open up or create a new drawing. The center shows us what we've done lately. And the right side is notifying us of things like in this case here, we don't have our graphics turned on and we're not signed into 360. For more often than not, when we're working on drawings, we're going to use the middle one because it shows us anything that we've recently opened. But for right now, we're going to start over here in the getting started, obviously. There's two choices to this button here, start drawing. That's like hitting the button up here for new. It's going to use the Q new setting, in this case here, a default template. But what I'd like to do for now is to specify a specific template. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to click on templates here, open up this very top choice, which is the AutoCAD Civil 3D Imperial NCS. This should follow the National CAD standards. Templates in Civil 3D are a requirement in my opinion. All the styles that we will need have been created in some part and ready for us to use. This template, the Imperial NCS, starts off with dozens of layers created for our use. Let me check up here, see what kind of layers we got going on. As you can see, we got a bunch already. These layers are contained in many styles. These styles, if we wanted to, we can go over here to the settings tab, check out and see that there's multiple contours, label styles, multiple surface styles, as well as multiple styles for like points and labels for those points. We're going to use some of those in just a moment. Um, also, in Civil 3D, like many other AutoCAD applications, there's many ways to do something. I'm going to use the one that I like to use best, just for simplicity in these videos, but keep in mind that this isn't the only way to do something. In this case, let's add some points to this drawing. I'm going to right click over here on points, go to create, it's going to pop up a menu. Yours will probably pop up here if it's the very first time you've used it, used it but in my case, I've used it a time or two. So it's going to pop up wherever I left it last. Of all the different options on create points, of which we have a lot, uh, the only one that we're going to be concerned about right now is this one here, import points. So clicking import points will bring up a toolbar, or a not toolbar, will bring up a dialog box, different boxes to play with. I'm going to click on this and find a file for us to use. It's going to be in my documents, class files, project one, change the file type to the txt that I need. There's my surface text. Open that. It should pop in here. I've already put this into a format which matches one of the ones that we have here. The PNEZD and it is a comma delimited file. This here gives us a little preview of what we're looking at. The default point number, a northing and easting and elevation, and a small raw description. Since this is going to be the only points in this drawing, we don't have to add them to a point group. It's automatically going to include them into the all points group that it's going to make for us over here in just a moment. And for the rest of these here, we're just going to leave the defaults. It's all right. Hit OK. It brings the file over. The bottom left hand side, we can see that we now have some points in this drawing here. They match our little preview. We have points highlighted at the top. We have a little square on the left hand side with a dot in it letting us know that we have one or more points in the drawing as well as a little plus next to point groups and the first point group it too has a little square with a dot letting us know that there's at least a point or more in it. I'm going to close create points to get it out of the way. Now that that dialog is out of the way I'd like to see where my points are in here so I'm going to uh, double click the middle mouse wheel that should work as a zoom extents. That way I can see everything I put in the drawing so far. Right now I just see a bunch of little red X's. The little red X's are because all the points are currently in a group called All Points. I'm going to go over to the point group, right click on it, go to Properties. When the dialog box opens up, it's going to open up on the Information tab. On the Information tab it's going to show us what the name of the thing is. In this case it's grayed out because we can't edit it. Um, but it, we can edit any of the default styles. So I've mentioned styles before and what styles are really is just how something looks. So currently things are looking like a basic which they've determined is a basic red X 
and the point label style currently has no, nothing on it. We can uh, click on that down arrow there and let's go for one that shows us a lot of stuff like the point number, the elevation, and the description. Click OK. What that'll do is now it attaches that data to each of the things, each of the things, each of the points. Since each point now has this is its point style, this is the point label style, we can see that here's the number, the elevation, and what it is. What I'd like to do with this is I want to segregate out a few of these things, or not segregate out. What I'd like to do first is take some of these and put them into their own little groups so we have smaller smaller groups that are easier to control. The first one that makes sense to me is this right here, Topo. So let's go over here to Point Groups. We'll right click on Point Groups, go to New, make a new group. It too has an information tab. I'm going to type in Topo for its name. I'm going to keep its style as basic because I don't mind the little red X. But all I really care about on Topo Points is just the elevation. So let's say Elevation. Um, at this point, if I were to hit OK, the point list would look like this, blank. To get things into this point group that I've just now named and given a specific style to, I would like to include things to it. And one thing is I know that all these topos are listed as their raw description. So I'm going to go over here and say with raw description matching T-O-P-O. -O. Now I'm going to check my point list. Got points in it. Say OK. Boom. Now I got all my topo points listed as just the elevation. That's enough for me to kind of go, ah, all right, now I see what I'm looking at. Let's make a few more point groups with a few more specific things in it. One thing I do know on this particular file is that MPs and OKs are trees, but those are trees of differing sizes. So to get some trees in here, let's go back to point groups, make a new point group, call it tree. Oops, what help if I clicked on the name category? trees. For the point style, they have nice enough to give us a tree point. And what I want to do for this one is just leave the description only on there. I can see my point list is currently empty. I want to include anything with a raw description matching OK. I'm going to put in the shift and 8 for the asterisk. That is a wild card. So if it's an OK 4 like it is down here, or an OK 6 that some of the other points have, It'll include all the OKs, and I'm going to do the same with M MP, put an asterisk in as well. Now when I go to look at the point list, I can see that I have a whole bunch of points. I've got OK6s, OK3s, okay MP3s, 4s, 6s, pretty good. Hit OK, and now I've got a bunch of little trees. So far, so good. Let's make a few more point groups real quick. Go over here to new. I'm going to make a point group called this one swale. Okay, swale. I'm going to leave it as over here, basic and description only again. Yep. Let's go here to include with a raw description matching. So ALE. Point list. Boom. Swales. We're looking good. And with that. And we're okay for now. Should I make man with that? Now that we're down here, let's put a f wait one more point group. I'm gonna call this one here uh, Edge of Pave. Include anything with the raw description matching EOP. Check my point list. I got EOPs. We gotta go back to my information. Still on basic. Still on description. Good say OK. Now you can see my little EOPs in there. Now that I've got point groups created, I can use these point groups to put into other things. I can, as you can see, we've been able to label them separately. But I also want to take these point groups and put them into something like, in this case, a surface. So let's make a new surface. As you can see over here, on the left-hand side, since there isn't any icon, that's how you know that there isn't any surfaces created already. Let's right click on there and say create surface. We've got the create surface dialog. All I'm going to change two things in here. I'm going to change the surface name to EG for existing ground. I might change the description for existing ground. And then I want to change the style to something a little more colorful. If you if you notice, we have 
background and design on a lot of these different choices here. Design just means it's going to be more colorful. Background is going to be two shades of gray. Click on that. Click OK. Click OK. And now I get a plus over here on surfaces. My surface EG is sitting there waiting for me to put something into it. For all of my class, I'm not going to mess with masks or watersheds right now. All I really care is how this thing is being defined. And to define a nice quick surface, in this case here, I've got topo points already put into a point group. So since I don't have any of the other categories except for point groups, that's my only choice. We'll right click on that, go to add. Now in add, it shows me all my point groups. I'm going to click on topo, say OK. And since my one in five design was built to give me some colored contours, that's what I got. There's the extent of all my topo points. Let's put a nice little border on it. And everything that doesn't have a topo point in it is now left out kind of on the side. Those ones would be good to include in their own little hidden point group.